Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And I'm putting this video up because I could not find any information on this problem that I was experiencing. I'm hoping that this information will help somebody that has this series of office jet printer. This office jet printer I purchased in 2015 new and the inside circuit board show 2014. So this has had a pretty long service life. You can see in a picture here, if you can get to the information menu, you just got to press the back button, I think four times and it will go to, it's called the support menu. You'll see here that this particular printer has nearly 4,800 pages that it's printed out in its lifetime. So, and that's a pretty decent amount considering it's a home office printer. That being said, uh, only in the last few months has this started to give me problems. And the specific problem, and this is, seems to be a common one, is I was getting the black screen of death, meaning that I could not touch the touch screen or the power button. It wouldn't boot up. It wouldn't power up. Nothing like that. And the only way that I was able to get it powered up is if I was to go into the back and then pull the power cord out, plug it back in, uh, back and forth uh, quite a few times before... I was able to get rid of that black screen and then it would boot up, but then I would still be having problems such as ghost touching on the screens. It would jump into another menu or it would try to print out a report or would try to scan something. I would wake up and I would find the, a piece of paper that would come out and it had some markings or like hieroglyphics, like it was starting to print, but then it was canceled. A lot of weird glitches happening with this printer. The first thing I thought, well, it must be a bad touchscreen. You know, the touchscreen gets used quite often. I figured, why not go and uh, replace the touchscreen? So I ordered a new one. Well, a new used one off of eBay. I think I paid like $24 or $25 for it. And it came with this whole panel. I went and threw it in and it seemed to have fixed it. But then like a day or two later, same problems. So I then decided, well, maybe it's the power supply. I know capacitors, electrolytic capacitors dry out over time. Maybe the power supply is starting to get faulty. And then every now and then, if it drops below its uh, rated voltage, then it will start to cause these kinds of problems. So I went and spent $12 for a new power supply, brand new from HP and from a reseller on eBay. Not a big deal, but same problems. In fact, I could. it took me longer to get the machine to power up. So not the power supply, not the touch screen. There's only one other board inside that I can think to change that where everything happens. And that is the main logic board. I picked up a logic board on eBay used and it was about $25, $24, somewhere around there. And here is the board. This is the board inside and I'll show you the part number. The F1H96 number, that is the part number that you need. And this particular one is revision A06. The one that I got from the guy on eBay is revision 7, but it's essentially the same part. And there's a lot of ribbon cables. You can actually see the Wi-Fi card there. I read online that some of these HP printers have problems booting up because of a faulty wireless card and maybe that was the case but it is soldered on here but i'm going to put this off to the side here this is what i found when i took the machine apart before i put the new board in so it's a decent amount of work to have to go and get to that logic board however when i pull the board out if you look at this picture on the side you'll see that there's a lot of not corrosion but it's a lot of dust you know and after so many years of operating it's got a lot of that on the back of the board there and it's probably a combination of not only dust but it's also ink residue and the humidity and all that stuff it's sticking to that board well that i believe is what i was dealing with that is actually believe it or not that type of debris on a circuit board can actually become conductive and cause these kinds of issues that i'm seeing now this is the original board and I've already cleaned it off of that debris just using regular rubbing alcohol and lightly taking a toothbrush and brushing everything off. Now there is still a tiny bit of residue but what I found was that where these all these traces go here on the bottom there was a hard piece of debris that was straddled between all of those traces on the circuit board and while I'm not going to go and 
put this back in to test my theory, I'm almost positive that's the exact issue that I was dealing with there. And you got to be very careful if you do try to clean it because you got some very small, I don't even know how well the camera can pick up on that, but all these really tiny surface mount devices here that if you're not careful, if you're trying to use a toothbrush and, or try to clean it in general, you don't want to use a rag or anything like that because you'll pop these little things right off and then it's really useless at that point. But yeah, uh, I'm just passing this information along. I, ever since I put the other board in, I haven't had any of those ghost touching issues, nothing like that. It boots up now without a problem. I can then, it'll stay in sleep mode. It won't just wake up randomly like if someone uh, touched the screen or if it was getting a, a job from the wireless, for example. It stays in sleep mode until it actually gets a job instead of me waking up and finding random pieces of paper spit out when there's nothing on it. It's, it was just a lot of weird issues going on with that. And I will say too that the original uh, BIOS the 2032 there, I did change that thinking that was the problem. No, not at all. In fact, the original one is right here and the it's actually from Japan and I tested it and it's still good. So very weird, but passing this information along, if you have an office jet printer like this, chances are that you might be dealing with debris and other junk on the circuit board that's causing those kinds of issues. You could wind up replacing the two main boards like the power supply and that logic board to see if that solves your issue. I mean, unless you're mashing on this touchscreen, I don't think you're going to find a problem with the touchscreen. I mean, I got spare parts at this point, but I'm hoping to keep this running as long as possible because a lot of the new printers, I probably wouldn't wind up getting another HP printer because this just the quality is not there. It's a hit or miss. This one, I haven't heard a peep out of up until a few months ago. So guys, thank you so much for watching and any questions, please let me know. Take care.